This is a four community Bible talk preparing us to connect in a community space this coming Sunday at 1030 only on Zoom. This is another four community message that we can discuss in our next Zoom gathering this coming Sunday for community creates community spaces so that you can connect with others and hopefully connect with with God hopefully so we're into Mark Mark chapter 1 16 to to 20 and uh, as I was prepping the message it reminded me of a story of uh, my dad and I I was trying to connect with my dad one time a bunch of years ago uh, I'm not a fisherman but he is a fisherman he loves fishing and I don't I never really got into it myself, but in order to connect with my dad and get that quality time with my dad as adults, you know, because we have to, I was trying to connect with him. I went out and I bought uh, a rod and reel and some and some tackle. I have no idea what I was doing. I saw something on a, on an infomercial late one night, and it was everything I would need to go fishing with somebody. And it was like thirty bucks, so it wasn't the greatest equipment in the world. So I bought it. It came in like maybe two weeks later or something, and uh, and then I called my dad up and said, "Let's go fishing." And it was it was a horrible experience. I don't mean connecting with my dad. I mean fishing was a horrible experience. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not a fisher guy. I just anyway. So, in order to move our connecting time to the next event, I cast my lure purposefully into the rocks, and I yanked on my line, lost my lure, and I said, "Dad, lost my lure. I'm done for the day. Let's go get coffee. Let's go get a burger. Whatever I said back then. I am not." I am not a guy who loves who loves fishing. I've tried it, but not with all my whole heart. I'm not a guy who loves fishing. In the story today, however, we're connecting with some guys who love to fish. The uh, the disciples uh, later on in the book of Mark, they're called the disciples. Not at this point in the story. In Mark chapter one, we're introduced to uh, to a few guys who are fishermen. They love to fish. They uh, it's their it's their profession. And these guys are are masculine men. You know, they're maximum masculinity, you know, in uh, in the story here. And so Jesus comes across these guys and he begins he begins to call them. And in order to call them, Jesus uses something highly contextual and he asks them to follow him in order to fish for people. They were professional fishermen and Jesus says Come follow me, and what I'll do for you is I'm going to make you fishers, fishermen, for for people. Not only in this passage and, and through the book of Mark are we seeing that uh, the gospel, um, the message about who Jesus is and the invitation to follow him, not only do we see that all through the first part of Mark, but we also see right here a glimpse of how Jesus built his leadership team. And I think that's pretty significant because right here, you know, the, what he does to build his leadership team, at least start building his leadership team in verses 16 to 20 of Mark chapter one was so significant and so powerful that it's impacted the entire world. And, and that initial leadership team has grown into a worldwide leadership team through every generation since Jesus died on the cross and rose again. So that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20, and we're looking at followership and leadership and how they're connected in the text here. So I'm going to read it from, I'm, I'm reading from New Living Translation, NLT, Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once, and they followed him. A little further up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat, repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. It's funny, you know, as a dad of uh, two of my kids are teenagers, I read this passage very differently. I look at the father, uh, Zebedee, and I really, um, I groan inwardly with him because uh, I notice it as my teens 
get a call from their friends or, or they want to do something with their friends, they leave the parents in the background, said, Mom, Dad, you do all the work now. I'm going to go hang out with with my friends. And so uh, so Zebedee, sometime in eternity, when I get a chance to connect with you, I'm going to put my hand on my shoulder and say, I feel your pain, brother. I feel I feel your pain. So we're still into the book of Mark, as you can see here, and we're going to continue to journey together through, through Mark here. What we're seeing in Mark chapter 1 is we're still seeing uh, the seeds of uh, the content that we'll find in the rest of the Gospel of Mark. And so in the very first passage, we see the uh, the four-part thesis, how throughout the rest of the Gospel of Mark, we're going to see something about a hearing, receiving, following, and um, agency. We're going to see those four things all through the Gospel of Mark. And, uh, and we see a demonstration of agency, first from John the Baptist, and, and then last week, uh, last passage from Jesus. And now what we're seeing here is not only is Jesus demonstrating agency, but he's also building agency into the initial followers that say, yes, I want to tag along. Yes, I want to join what it is you're doing. So what we're seeing right here in this passage, I believe anyways, is we're seeing Jesus building his lead team. And we're seeing some of the guiding principles, I think, about how Jesus builds his lead team. So yes, we're still seeing following Jesus. He's still calling people to believe in him. He's still calling people to receive him, sharing the gospel, and calling people to follow him. But he's also, at the same time, as he's building people as followers, he's also building his lead team based on brand new followers who barely know anything about the guy at all, and not so much about his message at all. This is, this is what he's doing. He's building not only a following, he's building his lead team. So today, what I see in the passage is how Jesus connects followership and leadership. That's what I see. So that's what we're going to talk about, how Jesus connects followership and leadership and why that matters to you. What new and wonderful opportunities open up for you, knowing that Jesus isn't looking for people to follow him simply as sheep, as mindless sheep that just do nothing but say, ah, and just always be a follower, always following. What Jesus actually offers for you is not only to you, is not only simply following him, and yes, he does offer that to, to us, and it's wonderful, that, that's wonderful all in itself, but on top of that, in addition to that, building on that, is he offers you a chance at leadership, which I'm calling agency quite a bit, but now we're talking about his lead team. He offers to bring you into his lead team, even here and even now. So let's open up the passage just a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about follow followership first, what it means to follow Jesus, what Jesus was doing, and then we're going to talk about leadership. Both are found in, in the passage. And just a heads up, if you want to go behind the scenes and try to figure out how I came to my conclusions about the text, or if you want to dig deeper because you like going a little bit deeper in, in the text, then uh, you can uh, continue to study through the inductive study that I've also posted on YouTube. And when we connect together, uh, with this coming week, it's going to be Sunday at 1030 on Zoom. When we connect together, we can talk about whatever matters most to you. So we can talk about this message. We can talk about the inductive study or just whatever's on your heart. And if you if you not yet joined us on Sundays at 1030, reach out to me and I will extend you an invitation so that you can join us on, on Zoom. Let's first talk about uh, Jesus calling everyone into followership. Okay, that's that's my first point. Jesus calls everyone everyone into followership. And we've, we're seeing that, we're seeing the build within the first two passages, and we're seeing the continuation of that message right here in this passage. In this text, we see the same for, formula being demonstrated, where the gospel is somehow being communicated. Now, that's, that's inferred more than we see Jesus actually sharing the gospel. Um, there's this moment where Jesus allows people an opportunity to choose to receive or not, come follow me. And then we see people coming into uh, fo following Jesus. So here is implied, I think. Here, receive and follow. And agency is being demonstrated by Jesus. But not only that, Jesus is offering agency to bring others into agency very quickly as he, as he starts right here to build his lead team. The disciples, they hear, at some point they've heard, they know who Jesus is. I, I would be hard-pressed to think that if they didn't know who Jesus is, they didn't know anything about his message, that they would be so quick 
to follow him. So my guess is that they know Jesus just a little bit. It's I'm just guessing here. I don't know that for sure. But my guess is that they already have a sense of who Jesus is. And so they very quickly respond to Jesus. And, you know, one of the things that hits me in this text is how quickly the disciples respond to Jesus. Because I I don't respond that quickly to Jesus uh, often. Like I do respond, I have responded to Jesus, but sometimes, you know, the changes that I need to make in my life, uh, stopping some things that aren't healthy for me, uh, doing some things that are that are healthy for me, that just to, just in response to what I hear from the Bible, what I think Jesus is saying to me, I'm not often as quick as these disciples are. Like these guys who 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 barely know Jesus, barely know his message, there is an immediate response to Jesus. Thank God. Because based on this immediate response to Jesus, they're pulled into, brought into, invited into, included in Jesus' lead team right from the get-go. Okay, so, so they hear, they receive Jesus, and they start to follow him, you know, by completely walking away from their old life to live, live a new life as, as a follower of Jesus. And it, there is something interesting in the passage that I want to point out here, okay? So these guys who are fishing for a living, there's, there's, they're not doing anything wrong. It, it doesn't look to me like they're doing anything wrong. They're not like sinning. Ooh, you're so bad. You're an axe murderer. You know, you need to repent. It doesn't to me look like this is, is a moment of repentance here. It looks like for these people, they're, they're doing an okay job at life. Jesus calls them. They want to follow him. So they leave their old life behind, not because there was anything wrong with it, but just because there's a whole world of new opportunities to explore once you begin to follow Jesus. And uh, when we talk about the gospel, uh, the message about Jesus, when we talk about receiving forgiveness from Jesus and beginning to live uh, and following him and how to receive that forgiveness, just going to say, Jesus, I recognize that some of the stuff in my life hasn't been working out and, and I've done some bad stuff. Please forgive me. You know, Jesus forgives us right away, lickety split, right away. And then Jesus, I'm going to start following you. That's, that's awesome. Now, some of the things we do in life is just fine. Like we've got to work for a living. We've got to take care of the kids. Fine. But once we begin to follow Jesus, there are so many new opportunities that open up to us. And sometimes the life change that happens in people isn't just because they were doing something wrong, but it's because there's a whole world of new opportunities that opens up to people who say yes to Jesus. So there's a life change because of new opportunities and new strengths that people receive. And I think that's what we're seeing in the disciples here. They're not walking away, I don't think, of, uh, from a life that's like, like horrible. Like these guys aren't, aren't like selling drugs and stuff. It's not in the text anyways. They're, they have a new opportunity that they're, that they're pressing into. So Jesus calls everyone into following him, into followership. If you have not yet made the choice to follow Jesus, then let me just sort of put this little, little, piece of information or this little call or this little invitation out to you that Jesus loves you. This this whole gospel of Mark is to let us know how much God loves us. And I think this message of God loving us, particularly right now, where we lock where we're locked down in pandemic, it's so vitally important. Like people want to hear and we need to know that God loves us. Okay. We got ourselves into a mess. This virus isn't God's fault. It's 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 humanity's fault. We did we got ourselves into a mess. And so now that we're in this mess, we're reaching out saying, God, do you still love us? Can you please help us? And God says, Yeah. I still love you and I'm still calling you into a relationship. So if you believe in Jesus, if you're like, yeah, okay, I do believe in God. Yeah, okay, I do believe in Jesus. What do you do about that? Receive him. Acknowledge him. You know, say Jesus, just you to say Jesus. Get his attention. Start praying Jesus. Hello. You know, okay, I do think that you're real. Um, and I acknowledge that I have probably done some bad stuff in the past. Please forgive me. And, uh, and right now, teach me what it means to follow you. I have no idea what I'm doing, what this means, but Jesus, please teach me what it means to follow you. However you want to reach out to God and connect with him is fine because God gives us a, gives us a whole lot of wiggle room to talk to him the way that we need to talk to him and just work things out with him. It's okay. So, so that's, that's part of following Jesus. Just take that step to say, yeah, I believe it. I've, I've heard something about you. I'm choosing to believe in you. And yes, please help me to be a follower. Teach me to be a follower. Okay. That's, that's how we begin this. That, that invitation goes at every Jesus call, 
Jesus calls everyone into this relationship, into this friendship with him. It's not a religion. Religion is static. Religion is rules. This isn't religion. Um, true spirituality is relationship. It's not religion. True spirituality is um, the deep relationships that we have with first with God and then with other people. You know, and Jesus sums it up. Love God first, love others second. That's true spirituality. That's what we're talking about here. Okay, so first of all, Jesus calls everyone in into followership. Um, just before I go into the second point, let me just give you a heads up. Um, I'm going to out one of my friends who is joining us in for community when we connect together. I won't give you his name, but he, he sent me a text um, after he watched the last inductive study. And he said, Rick, the glow on your forehead is so bright. It reminds me of my future because my future is bright too. It's like, Okay, dude, whatever. So I've, I've brought the camera down just a little bit to stop the big, the big headlight off of, off of my forehead. Okay, number two. Uh, Jesus also calls people into leadership. And this is so vitally important. You know, I think it springboards off of the, off of the idea that uh, when people come to Jesus, they're not always leaving a, a life of sin and horribleness behind them. Sometimes they change because when they come to Jesus, there's new opportunities that opens up for them. There's new avenues of growth. There's new strength in that they find in themselves that they never knew was there before. And they want to pursue those new strengths that they have just found, and they want to grow in those strengths that they have just found. So people's lives will change when they begin to follow Jesus, not not just because, you know, they're horrible people, because a lot of people that I see who are like coming to Jesus say, yes, okay, I believe in Jesus, I want to follow him. They suddenly realize that there's more strength in them that they, that they thought. And they come into the, to a community, like for community, who's going to encourage them and, and give them even more strength and speak more strength to them. And they're mentored a little bit in, in some cases. And they just pursue new avenues because they find, wow, I never knew this was an option for me. And I think this was going on here. Jesus, calls people into leadership that we're seeing in the text here. So what the disciples probably didn't know at the time is that Jesus was calling them into leadership. Now, they, they had some sense that they weren't just following him, that they were joining his team, but I am confident they had no idea how big this thing would get, right? I mean, in, in the Bible, after the Gospels, so the first four books in the New Testament are called the Gospels. It's a genre of, uh, it's a style of writing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're written in the style of, of Gospel. Immediately after that is, is a book called, a letter called Acts. And in that letter, we, um, the, the purpose of the letter is to try to figure out how did a group of just 13 guys, Jesus and the 12 disciples, and we'll find out about them a little later in Mark. How did a group of 13 guys become a worldwide movement within a single generation? So that's, that was the question that, that's the premise of the, of the book of Acts, one of the premises, I suppose. So they didn't know how big this thing was going to get, but they say, yes, I'm going to jump in here. Specifically, Jesus is calling them into gospel communication leadership. So for these guys, this is a specific kind of leadership that whatever else they're going to be doing as they follow Jesus and as they excel in their own uniqueness, as they excel in their, in, in the diversity the pieces of diversity that they bring to the table, right? Because diversity is wonderful. Diversity is a strength. And, and the more diverse we are, the stronger we are, right? So they're, they're going to bring their own skills and their own uniqueness and their own strengths to the table. But Jesus specifically is calling them into gospel communication leadership, which is the first point of the, uh, of the four part thesis. Hear, receive, follow agency. And as somebody's action, somebody is acting in agency and living in agency, then they will be communicating uh, the message about Jesus, giving opportunity for people to receive, mentoring those who want to follow, and then helping those to step into their own form of agency, right? So Jesus as an agent is uh, is calling these people into demonstrating whatever their version of agency will look like. And he says, whatever your version of agency is look like, it's, it looks like it's going to include this gospel communication leadership. Their training and releasing happens alongside their journey into followership. 
And that word followership doesn't only mean following Jesus. The word followership includes this moment that we hear Jesus, we receive him, we follow him, we step into agency, and then we become agents where we're communicating the gospel and we're giving opportunity for people to connect with Jesus. And we're mentoring them a little bit and saying, this is what it means to be a follower. Co-join, like join with me as we as we kind of work this out together. And then let me help you um, figure out what your demonstration of agency, your expression of agency is going to be. It's all called, it's all called followership. At least I've titled the whole thing Followership. Followership and leadership happen together. When you come to Jesus, when you say yes to Jesus, when you choose to follow Jesus, you're you're not choosing to be like a mindless sheep. Now, I do like the uh, the metaphors the parables in in the new testament that calls us sheep and he's our shepherd that protective you know that fatherly protection leadership and guidance i love those metaphors but you know those metaphors break down if we follow them too far we're we're not mindless sheep um god has actually equipped us somehow i mean just with our dna we're all equipped to do and behave and to think very very differently feel very different like different things just like different things and uh, as we see in the first part of mark as well there's this person called the holy spirit around who's also um filling us and doing something with us to help empower whatever this agency looks like and we're going to talk about the holy spirit a little bit later not right here because it's not in the text but we see that um everybody is called to into not just followership but also leadership you have something to offer uh, you are somehow equipped for greatness at some level. You know, Jesus isn't calling you just because he wants somebody sitting in the seats on the stage where he gets to perform and we just clap for him. We just sing for him. That's not what we're getting into. Um, we're getting into a relationship with Jesus where we walk side by side with him, so to speak. You know, that breaks down a little bit too. However, there is a sense where we're walking alongside him as friends and we're and we're working alongside him as he was working and he's lifting us up and building us up into leaders he's investing in us so when you say yes to following jesus he's investing in you in ways that we can't even see and can't even imagine initially and forever i suppose but he's investing in us and making us more than what we thought we ever were and he's 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 empowering us with some version with some form of leadership that you and i are going to express very very differently. Okay, so here's the takeaway from from this passage here. Gospel followership is also gospel leadership. That's what I get out of this text, the summary of this text anyways. Gospel followership is also gospel leadership. When you choose, and please do choose, to follow Jesus, when you choose to follow Jesus, uh, Jesus just does stuff on the inside of you that you and I can't see, but it's happening. And he empowers us and he makes us more than we were. And he also gets us to notice the stuff, the strengths that we had initially that we never noticed before. He highlights them for us. By the way, there's a whole lot of strengths that you already have that you that's already at work in here. And I just want to highlight to you how strong you actually are. You know how how great you actually are. I'm going to call you to to a greater expression of life that you're already equipped for. Because you know, in, in another part of the Bible, it says that God, it says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That we are God's handiwork. Like God loves you so much, He's put so much of His handiwork in you. And there's just some things that you and I just don't tap into until after we say yes to Jesus and we embrace two true spirituality, which is a relationship with God and a relationship w- with others. Not religion. Religion is so static. It's about rules, it's about set times and stuff like that and tradition. It's not that at all. True spirituality is relational. It's a relationship with God and it's a relationship with others as we express our love for God and God's love comes to us and we express God's love to other people as well. That's that's what we're talking about here. Um, God has, God's make you, made you something wonderful. And when you come to Jesus, please choose to follow him. As followers, we're also called into gospel leadership. It's going to be looking differently for you than it does for me. We're going to express this differently. We're going to express kingdom agency differently, but we're certainly going to express it somehow. Okay. So uh, that's it for now. If you would like to join us in our Zooming, Zoom only right now because we're in the middle of the pandemic. If you'd like to join us in uh, in our Zoom meetings, we're going to talk about what matters most to you. So this message 
uh, primes the conversation so we talk we can talk about this as we connect over zoom on Sunday but we'll, we'll talk about anything that matters most to you you can also go ahead and look at the inductive study as well if you want to talk about some stuff in the inductive study that we that because we uncover much more in the inductive study then we'll talk about that if that matters to you we'll talk about that if there's something else burning on your mind and your heart that whatever that you want to talk about we'll talk about talk about that if you'd like a personal invitation because i don't advertise this we don't want to be zoom bomb if you want a personal invitation reach out to me somehow uh, leave a message for me send me a direct message whatever you can do to connect with me is fine and then i'll send you a personal uh, a link to our uh, to our meeting and i'd love to connect all right for community creates community spaces where you can connect with others and hopefully with god too see you next time It's all you want.